very silly. Sorry. Hey guys, welcome back. I know I haven't posted in forever. Stop touching the buttons. I haven't posted in forever, and here I am talking like I'm a vlogger, which I'm not. Uh, clearly, my promises of making vlogs and numerous videos has been uh, put on the sidelines because uh, I was struggling with Ezio for quite some time, and um, uh, Zayla, okay, well, my girl here, she's uh, just hanging out with me, Ezio decided to, he was infatuated with the camera and the fact that he could see himself on the laptop, but, um, <laughs> but I'm going to talk about why I haven't posted any videos and why I've been kind of silent for a long time, unless you follow me on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, then you heard everything that happened and uh, what's going on. So, the reason why I haven't been back on YouTube, and of course Ezio's gonna chew a bone right now. <laughs> hey, Ezio. No. Not loudly, at least. I was really, really struggling with Ezio, and I can't remember the last video I did. I haven't looked. Um, but the last video that I did, I think, was besides his birthday video. Um, uh, the last video I did was of not all service dogs make it as a service dog, or not all dogs are able to become service dogs, and when I did that video, I did that video because I felt in, like, in the back of my mind at that point when I was doing the video, I felt that, you know... Ezio was, he was doing great in his training, but there was just something about him that made me think he wasn't going to make it as a service dog, which I knew was a thing because he's a shepherd and n not saying that this is everyone's mistake or whatever, or a mistake in general, because you know what? Some people have shepherds and they're amazing service dogs. So I can't say that right um some like the first service dog out there was a shepherd wasn't it pretty sure um but i knew it was a difficult breed i was somewhat familiar with the breed not really um this is new to me and hang on I'm gonna confiscate your bone hey can you go chew that way over there please <laughs> but um Can you not get your bone? Yeah, that's you on the camera. Okay, stop. <laughs> All right, we're gonna return back to the video. Um. Anyway, um. Anyway, what I was saying was, you know what? When I was doing that video, I did it because I felt kind of in the back of my mind that, you know what, that's you kind of some of the behaviors he has just isn't this isn't chewing this over there but i did work with a trainer and we tried different um scenarios and we tried to okay well here's the reason why um it's hard for me to say but you know i washed Ezio from service work or service dog training in general um because uh, he just doesn't have the correct temperament. Um, well, I mean, he's got a fantastic brain. He's amazing. He's sweet as hell. Um, but just, he's so anxious and nervous and fearful at times. Um, which aren't really traits you want to have in a service dog. Uh, so, you know what, I thought it was just a fear period, uh, when he was growing up, and, I mean, he's almost two years old now, but, um, I figured it was just a fear period or something, and I worked really, really hard to train out of him, because he nervously barked, um, and then 
I, he stopped doing that for a little bit and then he occasionally does it now. Um, but he still does it. And if he's really scared, he will full on bark and growl. Not like snarling at you, but he's just scared. He's fearful. Um, but like I said, um, before all like that escalated, um, when I was training him, I, I pulled him from PA or public ask, public access work, um, for six or seven months, um, and brought him back into it. And he was good. He was still nervous and you, you can, you can tell he's just I'll, I'll throw in a few clips of Ezio working in PA, um, and I'll try and explain it. Um, I'll explain it in the video and I, in writing, and then I'll explain it now. Uh, okay, so when I took him out into public, um, the main things he did, like, he tried his best. Like, he really, really did, he listened very well to a point. Um, he'd heal, um, he walked, he walked great, but, um, he was just so nervous being in a public setting. Um, he was probably reading off of me because I am very, I'm not very good in public. What are you doing? Stop. But, um... Yeah, I'm not very good in public, so he was probably feeding off of me, which is another reason people kind of shy away from shepherds, because they feed off of your energy, and that's probably what he was doing, but, like, he's already so anxious, just adding my anxiety to it um, made him even worse, and that's not fair to him, so what I did when I pulled him, I didn't, like, I just, I took him to socialize with his puppy friends, and that's about it. Hi. Um, but, um, I didn't really take him into public. I waited about six months or more. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Um, to take him. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm baby. To take him into PetSmart, which was his biggest trigger. One of his biggest triggers was PetSmart. He got into almost like a guarding phase when he went into PetSmart for his training classes and his puppy socialization classes. Um, he'd guard the training room, and if anyone walked into the store, he'd bark and bark and bark and bark. Not excitedly, like he wants to see you nervously like I don't know who you are why you're in here get out of here and it wasn't super aggressive it was just like a nervous bark 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 kind of thing but um when I took him into public places like Canadian Tire to train him because in BC we owner trainers can only train unless they're working with an accredited school they can only train with um in uh pet friendly places um, so Canadian Tire is one of them. Stop. Um, but, uh, when I took him in there, and you'll see in the videos, um, you can just see him frothing and just drooling. excessively like I don't know if I have really good drooling videos of him not that I want to film him drooling but I don't know if I have really good videos of him like excessively drooling but you can just tell um and he like he's a he, he's a drooler he does drool I was surprised I did not know shepherds drooled but this one does um but he doesn't drool the only reasons he drools is if he's eating um, if he's playing and just doing act like actively and when he's super nervous, the first sign I picked up on was his drooling. 
But the second sign would be him looking around and just acting nervous and the typical dog traits of nervousness. He didn't, he never tucked his tail or anything like that and had it between his legs. Um, but you could just l look into his eyes and you can just tell he just wasn't happy. Um, like, uh, he tried his best to listen when I asked him to do a task or something, like, he would do it, but with a nervous edge, like, he'd, he'd maybe do it, he'd look around first and go, okay, what's around me, should I do it, I don't know, I'm trying to pay attention to my environment, I don't want anything to jump me, because I don't know if that's what was going through his head or not, but, um, I can't be his service human. <laughs> And with the added stress, it's just not good for my brain. Um, so I took him out of PA work again um, because uh, we were in PetSmart. I was with my sister and she had her dog. And Ezio did really good for the most part. Uh, he was still a little bit nervous, but um, he didn't bark at all. Uh, until we got in the lineup and a lady put down a box of kitty litter behind us in the lineup and it scared him where, yeah, okay, a, a dog's allowed to get startled, totally, totally fine, but as a service dog, they should recover quickly and not show signs of stress. Ezio show signed showed sorry showed signs of stress as soon as that lady dropped that and he saw her behind him he freaked out not like like oh my god he spun around and like Arr! no he stayed by my side he turned his head and started barking and he just wasn't happy he and then he growled and I was like no 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 okay that um that was kind of the final straw right there. I was like, mm, no. So I pulled him from PA work again. Like I did take him into, I didn't take him into anything, but um, I did walk him around my town, which is fairly busy. Uh, we do meet a lot of people when we walk. Um, not often. I mean, we say, we see the same people around the route it's a daily occurrence like we see the same people we say hi to them we walk by them whatever um but um just to get them a little stimulated and our school here um our town is so tiny um they do a run around our town that's their um pe class it's a run they do um so he gets like kind of um exposure there you go that's the word he gets exposure to crowds and children uh and he's absolutely terrified he's a basket case not like barking but he's just you can see how fearful he is he's spinning around he's nervous he's not paying attention to me he's almost knocking me over because he's so scared of what's going on around him and i like doing that for a few months instead of taking him into stores where he stresses out um just walking around town on a normal dog walk uh, stressed him out and i was like okay so i had to come to the conclusion to go okay i really need to evaluate this he's not getting any better because this he was like this from five and a half months six months on and I worked with a trainer, I did everything to try and train it out of him, and yeah, he's gotten a lot better, but I can make him feel better, but, and, like, get used to things a little bit, and expose him to it, and, you know, kind of train him to deal with it better, but I'm not going to train his anxiety out of him. So I'm, I made the decision to wash him because it's not fair for me to continue to train him and stress him out and myself out, just trying to keep him calm and trying to keep myself calm and pay attention to him 
which is great for me to pay attention to him, but um, it's just not worth stressing him out. He doesn't enjoy his job. He doesn't want to do the job. So why would I stress him out trying to train him to do something he doesn't want to be? Which is fine. I'm totally fine with that. Like, he works great at home. So he's now an at-home service dog. He performs perfectly when he's here. I can drop items. He picks them up for me. I ask him to take off my sweater or my shoes when my feet are swollen or if I have no, no feeling in my hands and I can't pull my shoe off myself. He helps me with that. He helps me with everything. Um, he does a lot of things here still. Um, so I'm not giving up with him that way. I mean, he, I'm going to still train him in the house and he can do tasks here, but I'm just not going to take him out and train him as a service dog anymore outside the home. So he's officially washed. I'm not bringing him back into training and no, I don't think he's too young and I don't think he's going to change. Um, well, I mean, yeah, he's going to mature. Don't get me wrong. He'll mature a little bit more and he'll be able to deal with things a little better, but I'm not going to stress myself out and him. There's no point. So I'm not going to do that anymore. So he's officially washed, and that's why I haven't done any videos. Like I said, it's a German Shepherd uh, was new to me because I thought, um, like the dogs I've had in my life, my grandparents had a German Shepherd in South Africa, and he was amazing. Uh, but he was a guard dog, but he was still amazing. Um, we had Rottweilers growing up. We've always had Rotties. We had two Rottweilers, and I grew up with them, and they were amazing dogs. Uh, my second Rottie, my boy, um, he would have been a really great prospect for me um, if I put the training in it, if I knew about surface dogs back then. Um, but again, I didn't have my disability back then, and I didn't need a surface dog. Um, but, uh, yeah, he would have been a great prospect. So I thought, okay, maybe, um, and then I tried training, uh, my husky, my husky Malmute, um, and she did, she took really well to the training, but she unfortunately is aggressive with other dogs and she's super nervous with people, but, uh, I am looking into prospect breeders, um, I'm probably not getting a prospect for quite a long time, which is unfortunate um, because I felt better when I was training a service dog and something about it. Like as soon as you don't have them by your side, it's just you see how much you needed them um, to be there for you. Uh, even though Ezio didn't really task or listen and it was quite stressful having him out, it was still something for me to focus on while I was in public. I think the biggest thing with this is the fact that I'm kind of losing my independence um, because I no longer have a service dog to train, which was the reason why I got a service dog. Um, for those of you who have service dogs, you totally understand this. Um, it's independent. Like I can go out by myself. Not that I do because when I go out in public, it's kind of a dangerous situation for me. Um, because when I get over stimulated, I, get very disoriented, I don't know where I am, I get very confused, and then I have now begun to faint when I get way overstimulated, and that is kind of a danger, and most of the time when I go shopping with someone, um, like my dad, I end up having to tell him we need to leave now, uh, I can't finish the shop, and blah blah blah. Uh, I mean, I, like, and I'm a fall risk at times. If I'm really having a bad day, I will fall. Um, 
and I kind of need I kind of need like someone just to help but like having someone there to go hey check in on me and go hey how are you feeling whatever um, is something that's needed for me um, and having the service dog would have been my independence where I could go shop on my own and feel comfortable enough to do it and safe enough to do it so that's kind of heartbreaking for me is the fact that I no longer have my independence I have to depend on people to take me shopping and not that I have an issue with that and I I just feel like I'm a burden to people when I do that so yeah that's kind of the biggest saddest part is I'm losing my independence and I was really really looking forward to it but you know what hey things happen um, for a reason that being said I am looking for prospect breeders I am going to go with a golden retriever because I realized the golden retriever the tasks I need aren't major so um, I don't need a huge, huge dog, and Ezio exceeded that. He is a huge dog. He's um, he's probably about 112, 113 pounds, and he's taller. He was he's bigger than my Rottweiler, my male Rottweiler was. Uh, he's the biggest dog I've owned. Um, but I really don't need a dog that size, and I don't need heavy, heavy mobility tasks. And if I do, I'm gonna use like medic, like I know, don't. I know service dogs are medical equipment, but I'm going to be using, like, if I really need heavy-duty mobility, I'll be using a walker or a wheelchair or something like that. I'm not going to be using my dog for that. Um, so, a golden retriever, I figured it out, <laughs> even though I probably, in past videos, said, a eh, golden retriever doesn't suit me, and it does. I, in my mind, I was like, ah, oh, the Fab Four, whatever, everyone's so... They, they like, hit you over the head with the Fab Four to the point where it's just annoying and you're just like, okay, I'm not even going to mention anything or ask about a certain breed that's other than the Fab Four because you're going to get people climbing down your throat going, hey, no, the Fab Four is the only dog you can ever do. And it's totally untrue. And yes, Ezio probably could have became a service dog. If he didn't have the anxious temperament, um, like everything else about him is amazing and service dog worthy, but the anxiousness is his only flaw, really. <sighs> yeah, um, so I'm going with a golden retriever. Um, I just think it's the wisest idea for me because training Ezio was so stressful. And I wanted to go with a Rottweiler for my next prospect. Because I love Rotties. They are definitely my heart breed. Um, I feel. Like, I, I've never had a Golden Retriever. I've rarely been around them. Uh, I've met a couple, but I like walking by them and pat one on the head a couple times. But I've never really been around them. Um, I will not get a lab. I don't like labs. Um, and for people who say golden retrievers and labs are the same dog uh, I don't think so I don't think they are um, they might have similar traits but I don't really think they're the same dog um, but I'm just not a fan of labs I don't like them um, I'm not a Labrador fan and I don't want one um, golden retriever I do I like them a lot um, I haven't met many but I've always really liked them um, the texture of their fur is something I really, really like. Uh, it's something to play with and just bring me back from dissociation and... Okay, hang on, I got Okay. Something ran across the floor and I wasn't sure if it was the cat or a spider. Um, <laughs> we have huge spiders here. Um, but uh yeah i'm gonna be looking for a golden retriever unfortunately probably not getting it for a very very long time um unless something changes i do not want to rehome Ezio. um 
he's super attached to me and I just couldn't do it. Um, like he's super attached to the point where he, he has super bad separation anxiety too. So he, where he tries to almost go through a window just to try to get with me if I'm leaving without him. Um, but like if situations change, we already have two dogs in the house. Uh, we, like, I could personally do three, but I'm not going to drive my dad insane because I live with him um, with three dogs because it's insane already with two dogs, a cat, and a ferret. But um, I don't think a third dog would do great, and I'm not going to introduce a puppy again to Zayla, my husky, because she's aggressive with other dogs, and her meeting of Ezio wasn't very pleasant. Um, I'm going to be looking for golden retrievers in the near future. Like I said, probably not going to get it for a while. I might keep this channel. I'm, I'll keep this channel just to, for the sake of keeping it. I might change the name in the future. Who knows if, when I get my next prospect. Um, but yeah, I figured I'd just do an update for you guys. If you want me to do more information videos, I can definitely do that. Um, I might do a couple more videos about just having a wash dog, because, you know what, it's just something that happens, and I don't think it's talked enough about. Um, but, like I said, Ezio is an at-home service dog now. He performs great at home for the most part, unless there's a person at our house that wasn't invited. Um, but... He does perform perfectly here. He's not in public. I'm not endangering anyone. There's very strict laws here. I'm not doing anything to break those laws. So I'm hoping to do the Golden Retriever. And not to say that the Golden Retriever couldn't wash. Um, I'm just saying they have a higher rate of um, becoming a service dog. Which is why they're one of the Fab Fours. And which is why the Fab Four is promoted so much is because, um, especially for first time uh, service dog owners like me, um, the Fab Four is your best choice. I'm not trying to shove it down your throat or anything. If you want to go for a German Shepherd and you're totally equipped to deal with them and understand that, hey, they, there's a high wash rate possibility, that's totally fine. Go for it. Um, but, um, yeah, the Golden Retriever is probably going to be an easier dog for me to train that way, and I'm going to change up a few things. Like, I figured, oh, I can just train a service dog all on my own, blah, 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 blah. But, um, like a Golden Retriever, it'd probably be a little easier with a Golden Retriever rather than my anxious German Shepherd, where he's a guarding, herding breed, where I have to kind of train those traits out of him. Um, yeah, um, I'm probably going to go above and beyond the PetSmart training. I only did the PetSmart training. Ezio already knew all his training and, um, before his classes even started, he knew all the basics, he knew all the advanced and whatever training. He already knew all that, so I just went to the PetSmart classes just for the socialization for him, so... And not that it worked well, but it worked well for dogs. He's very friendly with dogs, and the socialization with dogs are great. But humans in general, just that environment uh, just isn't great for him. Um, but, um, and critique me if you may, I washed him for a reason, and I'm not going to change my mind. Like I said, I could train him to deal with his anxiety better, um, but I'm not going to train it out of him. It, I can't. So, to be fair to him and myself, uh, I'm not going to stress him out anymore. End of the story. Whatever. Country, you can comment and hate all you want, but uh, I'm watching him for a reason. Um, but uh, this time, when I get my next service dog prospect, I am taking all... Even though I could probably fully train a Golden Retriever all on my own, I'm not going to do that anyway. I'm going to go through a trainer and do public access training with the trainer excuse me and um and whatnot i'm gonna take all the precautions i'm gonna get a trainer 
uh, like I said, I did have a trainer, um, and I've talked, and I talked to many trainers over, um, uh, camera and internet and stuff, and I asked for advice, and most of them said, you know what, um, you need to consider watching him, or stopping the training, which totally makes sense, and I did, um, but no, I'm going to take all the precautions. I'm going to hire the trainer, do public access training with the Golden Retriever and everything. <sighs> it's going to be a whole new adventure, but it's probably not going to be for a long while uh, unless something changes drastically or if I get help um, housing another dog um, but uh, or if I move out. Um, but yeah, um, I'm not in a situation to move out right now, um, because I can't work at this time, um, until I get, um, medications and whatnot, uh, to manage my MS symptoms and whatnot. Uh, that's what's been going on with my crazy life, and this is a new year and whatnot, and especially during the pandemic now, um, I'm not looking to get a puppy. I wasn't trying to get a prospect or wasn't interested in getting a prospect while the pandemic was still going on, which is, it still is very much a thing. Uh, training wouldn't be too bad, I suppose, if I really think about it, but I'm not interested in doing it while there's a pandemic going on, but I'm not against it. Um, if there's a way to do it and if the trainers are willing to work with me uh, through this pandemic that we're going through. Um, but yeah, um, that's pretty much what's going on. I know I've tried to end this video about four freaking times now. Um, okay, so what? I sighed, buddy. I sighed. <laughs> what? <laughs> you don't need to alert. You fly. I'm just gonna go bother my husky. Hi, pretty girl. Yes. He just nudged my hand. He was trying to alert. I'm very exhausted today. Um. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Okay, but we're going to end this video now. <laughs> like I said, I will include clips of what I was talking about where his drooling and now they're getting rambunctious and playing and I don't want them to knock over the laptop. Uh, so <laughs> see you later, guys. If you have any questions, I'll probably do a follow up video after this. Um, but yeah, like I said, that's what my journey's looking like right now. If you want frequent updates or at least a little more frequent updates, I'm not completely um, totally active on Instagram, but I am there, and if you message me, I'll probably message you back, um, but, yeah, that's what's happening, that's what's going on with Ezio, um, we're probably, like, uh, looking into different things for him, I might try shut down with him if I have the energy and, um, whatnot to do it and try it, um, he needs, he needs an activity, though, he can't just sit at home and do nothing. Which, he doesn't sit at home. I take him out for a walk every day. Um, and playtime. And lots of stuff with his friends. But, um, yeah, he definitely needs something to do. Um, he needs a different job other than service dog. Because that doesn't do them. Um, but yeah, that's my journey right now. And I'll probably update you guys soon enough. I'm not going to say right away because I'm not... Look how long it was for me to do another video. But, uh, yeah, so hope to see you guys soon. If you have any questions or video suggestions, throw them at me if you want. Um, yeah, so I hope everyone enjoys the new year. Uh, it's a new year. We're going to persevere, and we're going to get through all this hell we went through in 2020. So let's hope for a good year. All right, see you guys.